Good evening and welcome to Wednesday Night Nuggets. I'm Pastor Colin Ford of Alum Rock Christian Church in San Jose, California. We like to take some time out on Wednesday nights just to take a look at what God has to say for us in His Word to strengthen our walk with Him. Tonight's topic is making the best of prayer, but before we go there, we'd like to read some scripture. So if you would take your Bibles and turn with me to 1 Timothy, 2nd chapter, verses 1 through 8. I'm using an NIV, New International Version. Your Bible may be slightly different in the words, but the context and the message should be the same. 1 Timothy, 2nd chapter, verses 1 through 8. I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, and intercession and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all goodness and holiness. This is, uh, this is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all men, the testimony given in its proper time. And for this purpose I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. And a teacher of the truth, faith to the Gentiles. I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer without anger or disputing. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his word this evening. A vital part of our Christian walk with God is our prayer life. Many people seem to use prayer only when they are in times of crisis or as a last resort when everything else has not worked. They only pray when they are desperate for something. Not that going to God in desperate times is in of itself bad. Certainly, we can come to God in desperate times. But as Christians, we should have an ongoing relationship with God in prayer. As Christians, as God's children, God has given us the privilege of coming to Him in prayer. Our prayers are really a conversation with God, conversation that should take place daily and regularly so that we understand what God's will for our life is. This prayer, this conversation, is an intimate time we can spend communicating with God, telling Him or giving Him our thanks and asking for our needs and our desires. I love the assurance of that old hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It reminds us what a friend we do have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus shows our every weakness Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he will take and shield thee. Thou will find a solace there. If you look around, you will see that people pray in many different ways. But what does the Bible say about prayer? There can be no progress in any part of a Christian's life without prayer. It is therefore important for the believer to know what the Bible teaches on this subject. The following is an outline to answer some basic questions you may have about prayer. The first question is, huh, why pray at all? And the answer is because the Bible commands us to do. In 1 Timothy 2.8, we are told, I desire therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Our Lord Jesus was a man of prayer. So if Jesus, who we profess to follow, felt the need to pray, 
how much more is it important that we too should pray? The second question that is often asked, how often should we pray? We should pray at set times each day and then <laughs> in between those times. It's a good plan to pray upon rising in the morning and when retiring at night. Later in the day, we should look to the Lord when problems arise or opportunities arise or when help is needed or when we want to thank him for something. Certainly, every Christian should bow his head and give thanks before eating his or her meals, whether at home or in public. A third question that often arises is, in what position should we pray? In the book of Daniel 6.10, the scripture tells us that Daniel kneeled when he prayed. So did the Lord Jesus as described in Luke 22 and 41. Nehemiah, on the other hand, prayed while he was standing before the king, as recorded in Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 4. In general, Christians can kneel when at home, but it is still their privilege to speak to God while walking around the street or engaging in their daily activities. The fourth question that is often asked is, what do we pray for? Among the scriptures which answer questions are Philippians 4 and 6, Timothy 2, 1 and 3, and Matthew 9, 38. I encourage you to write those down and go look them up and see what the Bible has to say. There is nothing too small and nothing too great for prayer. Many believers find it helpful to keep a prayer list or journal recording such items as the names of unsaved relatives or friends, the names of those who are sick and in need of healing, the names of those who are serving the Lord, such as missionaries or evangelists, teachers and pastors. When your requests are specific, you will see specific answers. Whereas if your prayers for people are just general without naming them, you will have no way of knowing when your prayers are answered. The fifth question that comes along is, what are the conditions for answered prayer? And I believe there are four things that we can look at. First, John 15, 7 says, If we abide in Christ, in other words, if we stick with Christ, if we stay with Christ, if we abide with Christ, our requests will indeed be answered. Now, abiding in Christ means keeping his commandments. 1 John 3 and 22. 1 John 5.14 says that our prayer should be according to His will. Our prayer should be according to God's will. Since the general outline of God's will is found in the Bible, our requests should be scriptural. Therefore, pray in the language of the Bible. Sometimes you can pick a favorite psalm or Bible verse and use it as a prayer. Third, John 14, 13 and 16, 23 indicate that our requests should be offered in the name of Christ. When we truly ask in Christ's name, it is the same way as if we were making our request to God. So answer your prayer in Jesus' name, we pray. The fourth condition, I believe, James tells us in James 4, 3, says our, pr our prayers will be answered if our motives are not selfish and not sinful. If our motives are selfish and sinful, we cannot expect an answer to our prayer. So pray with a clean heart and a sinless life. The sixth question asked about prayer is the language of prayer. And we should, of course, address God reverently and sometimes Christians, especially those of us that are long in tooth, will pray using thee and thou instead of the more familiar you and yours in speaking to the Father. And though more modern language is certainly appropriate in our prayer, because after all it is a conversation, our language must be used in an attitude of awe and reverence of our God. God is not our good buddy. God is an awesome being 
and we should address him as such. The seventh question is, how do we pray appropriately? And there are seven, several guidance that we can see from the scripture. The first is in Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. Tells us that we should not pray to be seen. We should not pray so that others will see us praying. We should pray in private, not so that people can see us praying. Not so that we make a big deal. Oh, look, I'm praying. Then the focus is on me and not the prayer and God. Of course, it is appropriate to pray together in a group. We should not ask God to do something that we can do ourselves. No sane Christian would step into the path of an on purposely to an oncoming auto and then ask God to whisk them back to the sidewalk. God gave us legs to walk to keep us out of things that will harm us. We must take the first step. Another piece of great advice is do not ask for something you know you should not have. God sometimes grants such requests and then sends holiness to the soul, often through consequences. Psalm 16 and 15. Matthew 6 and 7 and Ecclesiastes 5:12 reminds us to avoid meaningless repetition. Saying one sentence a hundred times over is not a prayer. It's vain babbling. It is not a conversation with God. Could you imagine having a conversation with your wife and a friend and they told you something a hundred times over without taking a breath? That is no conversation. We have to have a conversation with God. Let him know by our words what is in our heart. So, what else can we do to make the best of our prayer time? Let's look at three simple suggestions. First, if you find your mind wanders when you're on your knees, try praying out loud. This will greatly help you to concentrate. If it is difficult for you to get on your knees, of course, sit comfortably. But as we sit or kneel, the most important thing is our attitude toward the prayer. That is what matters. Second, do not be discouraged if your answer does not come immediately. God's answers are never too early so we miss the lesson and waiting upon him can never be too late. Thus we think we have trusted in God in vain. Sometimes God answers yes. Sometimes God answers no. Sometimes God answers wait. But know that as a Christian, God will always answer your prayer. Third, if God's answer is not exactly what you ask for, remember this. God reserves the right to give us something better than we ask for. We do not know what is best for us, but God does. And so God gives us more than we could ever ask. Scripture tells us to pray without ceasing and to give thanks in all things by prayer and supplication. Now, praying without ceasing doesn't mean that you have to pray every minute of every day. Praying without ceasing means that you need to pray on a regular basis, like we talked about earlier. You need to have a daily conversation with God. And remember, a conversation has two parts. You speak and you listen for the answer. I will hope that you will strive to make your prayer life better. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We pray that you'll help to improve all of our prayer lives, Father, that as we pray that we are concise and exact and that we are reverent and that we pray with an appropriate attitude uh, and with respect to you. Father, just uh, thank you for answering our prayers. And even when the answer is no or wait, Father, we know that you're in control and thank you for that. Father, we just thank you again for the privilege of coming to you in prayer. These things we pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us for Wednesday Night Nuggets. Uh, tell a friend if you have something that you would like uh, us to discuss or you have a question you would like answered let us know. You can go on our website, alamrock.cc. Very simple, alamrock, all one word, .cc. You will find our phone number and our address and our email address. 
lots of ways to contact us. So again, if you have a question, we'd love to answer it. Just let us know. And I'd like to just remind you that we have two weekly Bible studies on the Zoom app. On Wednesday mornings at 9, our ladies have a Bible study. And on Friday evenings at 7, our associate pastor, Pastor Jim, leads our Overcomers Bible study, 7 o'clock on Fridays. Both of those are through the Zoom app. And if you would like to um, Zoom on to those, just contact us and we will get you the information to uh, connect with those. Also, we invite you to come to our services on Sunday at 11 o'clock. And we are starting up again to have both in person, but we will continue to stream them. So if you're unable or don't feel comfortable coming to a gathering yet, please tune us in at 11 o'clock on Sundays so that you can worship with us. Thank you. God bless and good night.